Now, what do you do if your score tells you what stops to use, but you don't have those stops? Perhaps you have the stops, but not on the manuals they suggest. What if, for example, they tell you to use swell, eight foot, four foot, and two foot flute, but you don't have those stops on the swell? Well, here we have eight foot and four foot. We don't have two foot. We've got the two foot fifteenth, but that's going to be very loud in comparison, so I don't think that's going to work. We do have a two foot flute on the choir, so we could use eight foot, four foot, and two foot flute on the choir instead of the swell, but that may be too loud for what the composer intended. Maybe they want something really, really quiet with the swell box closed. In which case, maybe we'll have to give up on the idea of using flute stops at all if we want to get the right balance. And perhaps we could use the eight foot flute, the four foot principal, and the 15th with the box completely shut. Let's see how that compares to eight foot, four foot, and two foot flute in the choir. Really, you can't notice the difference, I think, once the box is closed. So that might be quite a, a useful alternative. That's just one suggestion. What's most difficult is when you're asked to use a solo pedal stop that you don't have on your organ. A number of Bach's chorale preludes ask for a four-foot reed on the pedal, and very, very few organs in this part of the world have four-foot reeds on the pedal, or indeed have four-foot reeds at all. You only tend to find four-foot reeds on very large organs. So what do you do if you want to play that music? Well, one option is you just don't play that music, but that seems like a shame just because you don't have the right stops. If you can come up with a convincing alternative, then you can play that music and enjoy it. It might not be exactly the right sound, the sound the composer intended, but with a little bit of clever registration, you can make it sound almost as good. The pitch of a solo stop is very important. And if you're asked for a solo four foot stop, it's quite important that you don't disregard the pitch and use just a stop of a different pitch, an eight foot stop, for example, because that will distort the texture. If the composer asks for a four foot solo on the pedal, then you really need to use one. So if I wanted to find a four foot solo registration on the pedal on this organ, what would I do? Well, I have a couple of options to explore. First of all, I could try using an eight foot reed, but play the solo pedal line an octave higher. The problem with that is it may go too high to fit at all on the pedal board. So the first thing you can do is go through the pedal line and see if there are enough notes for you to play it on an eight foot stop coupled up an octave. So rather than playing this melody in the range the composer intended, say starting down here. You could just transpose that up an octave on the pedal. you may find it useful to write out the pedal part again in the new octave to make sure it works and that you don't forget to play it in the right range. But what if that pedal line goes too high to play it up an octave? Well, your only option then is to use a different four foot stop coupled down from one of the manuals. You could try the four foot principle on the grate, coupled down to the pedal. It doesn't really sound at all like a reed, 
but it certainly has a bright quality. You might like to experiment with perhaps adding the flute as well. It doesn't make a huge difference to the volume, but it certainly warms the sound up a little bit. So those are a couple of suggestions as to how you can overcome the limitations of your own organ in registering for pedal solos with stops that the composer might ask for that you don't have on your own organ. Sometimes you'll find that the composer asks you to play something on a particular manual, but you can't make it balance, in which case just play it on whatever manual is easiest for you, provided you still maintain the sense of solo and accompaniment that the composer asked for. In fact, in the piece by Parry that I played a few moments ago, he had asked for the left hand to be on the grate, but I played it on the choir because that's where I had a nice solo stop. It's very useful to know what sort of registrations these composers had on their own organs. And one of the wonders of the internet is that not only can we find these registrations and stop lists very easily, we can also even listen to recordings of these organs, the organs that composers played and knew very well. Some of them even survive unaltered from the times of these composers themselves. And so it can give us a very clear picture of what the music would have originally sounded like. We can use these recordings to build up a bank of sounds in our mind that we might bear in mind when we're choosing stops for particular repertoire. <laughs>